All right, our next step is taking the case off. I'm not gonna bore you on how to do this. Just a few screws, it's very easy to do. I've already taken on the ID cable. I gave this a quick wash down. Probably use a little bit more. I'm, I'm gonna take the motherboard out because I'm gonna TSOP flash it, but this is the 1L. I just turned it on for about three or four minutes just to let it heat up. Now we wanna do is we wanna take out the, this is the GPU and this is the CPU. The CPU is by far the easiest one to take out. You press this up and you'll be able to release it. You can, I have normally just use a flathead screwdriver to take it off, I'm gonna need two hands. But you also wanna make sure you inspect your case and make sure you look at my caps. None of the caps are opportunity. You see a little bit of dust there. I just removed, this is the clop cap, where the clop cap would go. The easiest thing to do, I'm telling you guys right now, pair of pliers, yank it out, you'll be good to go. A 1.1 to 1.4, always remove the clock cap. Just remove it. Again, you can tell this is a 1.0 by the single row power supply and the GPU fan here and the special header pitter for the controllers. I think it's called a controller board. This is a 1.0, you wanna check your power supply. Some people say to put a little more solder in the back there, so be careful there. Clean out your fan. This is a, you can see the chipset right there. But this board's in pretty dang good shape. It's not too bad. This is a very good candidate to work on. I already the hard drive ready to go. Now you wanna do is we wanna go ahead and actually unclip all the stuff. I can't do this with one hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna have to put the phone down as our cord, but it's pretty easy to take out. So you're gonna unclip these, and your best bet for, for this is to get a pair of pliers and yank this out. So you wanna go ahead and unplug the GPU fan here. This is for the ID cable, you can probably unplug that. This is the GPU fan. You wanna go ahead and unplug it, and then just take it out. I'll show you that right now. But it's to get a screwdriver and put it in between here and kinda of push up at the bottom there. It's very easy to do. This CPU is by far the easiest one to take out. This is your little clip, very simple. You'll pull it right out. It will look something like this. You're gonna go and clean all this off and clean this off. This is the CPU. I'm gonna get rid of all the dust. Now the GPU is a little bit difficult, but I made a video about this in the past. You get a pair of pliers. I recommend cutting a corner of this. I just heat it up. I let it run for about five minutes. You're gonna kind of wiggle this, wiggle this. Obviously you wanna make sure that this clip isn't clipped here. This is the clip here, see the clip? It's definitely unclipped. You don't want it to be holding to anything. It's not right now, it's unclipped, which is very good. Sorry, I need to focus my camera, I need to get better about that. Unclip, and then you wanna grab a corner, then kinda of pull up. This is very difficult to do with one hand. Again, I'm gonna, you pull up here, it will come right off. It's gonna take a little bit of strength, but it'll come off. I need the two hands to do this. But this is the GPU, I just got it out. So now your best bet to clean this is putting WD-40 on both sides and using IsoPure and scrape all this stuff off. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape all this now, but you wanna clean your GPU and your CPU for your Xbox. And using a rubber scraper and some isopyric alcohol to help scrape this off. We call this the for for forbidden candy. I really need to get better. It will scrape right off. You're just gonna press this. Scrape this off. We're gonna put new thermal paste on this and clean this off. That's CPU. This one's gonna be a little more difficult because you're gonna spray this down and basically kind of work it off till you can see the logo. Use a piece of plastic. Don't use metal. It's gonna damage the chip. You don't have to be super rough with it. But as you see, it's just gonna take some time. Go through that and take all this crap off and then clean it. Same thing you do it on both sides. It's pretty simple to do. Isopyric and just a piece of plastic. Like these are plastic scratchers. You get an AliExpress, I can leave a link in the video below. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this stuff off now. Watch your, see how clean that is? That's like a little duster. Clean this with the isopyric and blow this off. Same thing, clean the isopyric and blow it off. I have a little bit of thermal paste left on that. I'm gonna finish scraping it off. I'm just not gonna do this video, but I will have everything look like this. And then we'll apply the thermal paste on this side and a little bit on the GPU and put it back. It's pretty simple. Two hand on the thermal paste. I spread it on the back side, spread it on the CPU, spread it to the GPU. That's a little too much. You don't have to go all the way to the edges. You only have to cover the chip. And then I cover it on this. It's a very, very thin layer. It's not a lot. It doesn't look, and I'm using thermal paste with a spatula spreader. Very easy. This is probably a little too much, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. You wanna make sure you don't get it on your hands either, it gets everywhere. So go ahead and reinstall these after the thermal paste to both sides. Install the fans correctly, make sure that they're in place. Notice how they don't move anymore. This is to be pushed down. You can use a screwdriver, same way, come in and out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and TSOP this, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the motherboard out of this. Now, this is all I do is I get the conductive ink pen and I'm just basically connecting the two points. I apologize that I don't have a better camera, but it's literally just putting enough conductive ink on top to connect this point to this point. That's all you have to do. Once they are either, you can use solder as well, but with the pen, like I said, if I mess up, I can always wipe it off. 
or if it shorts something out, it doesn't boot, I can always wipe it off, which is really nice. That's why I like doing the conductive ink pen. Plus, I've done like 10 X boxes. Look how much ink I've used. I think I could probably do, I don't know, another 100 or so. It uses like none. Not that solder is expensive, but so this is the back side of the motherboard for the TSP swap. See how they're connected together with the conductive ink pen? And then we'll switch to the front side. Front side, same thing. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see it. Right, I'm gonna use my finger so you guys can kind of see where it is. This thing's really struggling to zoom. R7, see how this is bridged as well? See how those points are talking? Now all we have to do is load the Cerbios and this thing will be TSOP flash. That easy. Easy peasy, no solder needed. It's the best way to do it. In my opinion, it's the easiest to do with the conductive ink pen. You really can't mess it up. So that's why I like it. With the solder, you can either burn the pads, you know, you could mess up. So I just want to point that out. So just be very careful. If you're not good with solder, you don't trust yourself, definitely go with the ink pen. It's the way to go. Amadi, you don't need to do this, but since we're TSOPing mine, I downloaded the Cerbios boot disk. I burned it since I actually have a working DB drive, which is really insane. So if you notice, uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually set this up. I want to set it for DHCP and BMF mode. It will actually tell you what it does. It's going to boot from the media and set it to DHCP. I'm not using a static, so that's what I want. This will start the DHCP. And do you want to proceed? Yes. Definitely want to proceed. I'm going to hit A, and now it's going to load up. Trying to make this video short and sweet, so I'm just going to resume the next video on the options because it takes a little bit to load. Stage of this is going to be selecting how you want to do it. I like the Evo X dash. I'm old school. It's never feel me wrong. It tells you a little information about it. So we're going to go ahead and flash it with the Evo X. You press A here. And then this is going to tell you the speed. So if you're ever curious, we want to use the 100 megabyte one. I recommend UDM A5. That's the best one. You have an 80 pin cable and it's going to ask how, what size do you want to flash? I always pick the smallest one. It really, I don't really know the difference. Everyone says the smallest one always works. So that's what I pick. And then it says you're preparing to flash it. Press okay. And then if it's, if you get an error, that means you didn't do enough ink by the way. But if you don't get an error and you get this, that means you have enough ink and it will TSCP flash. So real fast. So if you do run that and you get an error, that means you need to apply more of that conductive ink or your solder reboot. And you want to go ahead and do initiate flash. Hit A, and it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? You want to hit continue? Yes. Boom. And then it will flash. And then if it's flashing correctly, it should kick off, as you see here. I'm recording this on my computer monitor because I hooked it up to my computer while I'm working. Just to show you guys the video. So if you don't want a soft mod, you can definitely TCP flash. This is by far the best method is using this or BIOS disk, in my opinion. Also, the Hexen disk is fine, too, if you're not like trying to get the latest version of a BIOS, you just want to flash anything on it. The Hexen 2018 disc is really good as well. Let this run, it will flash, it will turn off, and it'll come back as Sir BIOS, and I'll show you that in the next clip. Into uh, this dashboard, basically, I'm not a huge fan of this dashboard. You could keep it on this if that's what you want. If you, again, it has all my games already on here. Everything works, it's great. But I'm, I've am i also connected to this. this, is the IP address for my computer. I'm gonna change it over to XBMC for gamers. So People doubting me, I switched it over to the XBMC for gamers because that's my favorite dash. And to do it, it's actually very simple. What I did is I modified this is the Cerberus Cerberus INI file. Let me show you guys how to do it real fast. Basically, I did hard drive my first booting hard drive zero partition one equals XBMC for gamers directory. I don't know if it's partition one or two. Here's the thing so I'm FTP'd into it. This is the INI file. I modify the C drive and the E drive, they both have an INI file. And you notice I rename emulation station to one because I don't want to use it. And basically I'm booting into this folder. So I set the partition to boot into XBMC for gamers default.xbme. If you look here, this is the default.xbme file you need. All you do is I modify this on a computer and I FTP it over. You can boot to whatever dashboard you want, but you have to modify these strings. So my first boot is going to be XBMC for gamers. If you want to boot into other dashboards, you can modify it to whatever you like. I just like XBMC for gamers. So this modification is I, I make the changes on this Cerberus file and I just drag it over. That's all you do. You grab it and you drag it over to the C and E drive. I've already done it and you'll be good to go. As you can see, now we have a totally TSOP flashed Xbox 1.0 working perfectly. If you want, you could have stopped at the soft mod or you could do a full TSOP flash. It's really up to you. Also, make sure you guys register for Insomnia. It's pretty cool. You can play the Xbox online. So this is a short and sweet video for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope I didn't skip over anything. And the only thing I kind of skipped over was basically you have to soft mod your Xbox to read burn CDs if you don't drop everything over. So if you guys are only going with the soft mod, 
I just recommend stopping there. Honestly, soft bonding is fine. But if you want to go the extra step, you absolutely can TSP like I did with this box. And now it's ready to go.